Hey everybody, Anthony Dodge and Mile Train Outsider and welcome to a review of my Acme Class 371 Czech Railways locomotive for the high-speed Eurocity trains. Although the 371s get used for a lot of things. Long story with this, I'll try to keep it short. I have wanted a 371 since Joyce and I rode a Czech Eurocity back in 2017 that was pulled by a Class 371. And so once we got home, I, I bought the cars and I started looking for a Czech 371. And I could not find one. Pico made an AC1 years and years ago. And there was a shop in the Czech Republic that had one, but they didn't ship to the United States. Now, there are other liveries. In fact, about three or four years ago, Pico made a... Um, version of this in the red and gold livery, which is the other primary livery. But it wasn't AC and it was uh, the red and gold and I needed the blue and white livery. Well, fast forward ahead, the Italian company Acme announced early with their 2022 new releases, they announced that they were making a Class 371 and they're making it in both the red and gold and the blue and white liveries. And the red and gold was going to be in AC and DC, but the blue and white one was only going to be DC. And when I say DC, to those of you out there, that means two rail, okay, versus AC current three rail. All right, so I'll, I'll try to say two rail. Anyhow, they were not going to make it in a three rail Miracle and AC friendly version. And what they wound up doing was canceling the AC version of the red and gold one as well. Well... When am I going to see a 371 again? I figure it can be converted. I'm naive and I think, hey, it can be converted. So I bought it. And then I contacted Acme and says, hey, uh, do you have the AC bogies or the parts to convert this to AC? And it took a few contacts and even a call to Italy um, and hoping somebody spoke English, which I ran into. And they finally contacted me and said, no, this cannot be be converted to AC without completely retooling, in other words, going to a machine shop, retooling and redesigning the bogey. It's just not designed to take a third rail ski, the shoe, but we call it a ski. And uh, so you're, they gave me the name of their two primary um, outlet shops that do all their that they send all their repairs to. And I contacted both these shops and said, can it be done? And they said, no, it cannot be done. I contacted American people through various social medias and asked, does anybody know a lot about Acme? And they were going to make a three-rail version of this, so, I mean, wouldn't there be three-rail parts? And everybody told me, no, no, no. So finally, I contacted my last second go-to guy, uh, Andrew Chevalier at AC Euro Trains. Now, Andrew Chevalier is a licensed Pico representative who handles a lot of Pico repairs for Pico products in the United States. He has a shop out in Stockton, California. Uh, he, his online shop has been under construction for a while. Uh, so he doesn't do this stuff just off the streets for everybody. We just developed a relationship. Uh, when I went on and bought the Czech Railjet, found a Pico Czech Railjet that was DC, and they made an AC version, but you couldn't find the AC version. So I said, could anybody convert this? And he contacted me and said, yeah, I can do it. I'm a licensed Pico guy. So I did that. And we developed a little bit of relationship uh, talking about different things via Facebook um, and other social media. And so then um, I talked about I wanted to... Alex... Uh, train in AC, which nobody made. And he says, well, Pico has a starter set, but I can convert it for you. So he did my um, Alex train and converted that to AC. And from that time on, I would contact him and said, hey, would you be willing to do this for me? And I've realized he doesn't do this for a lot and a lot of people. We've just developed a relationship. So he has fixed trains for me. And he does this on his free time, which is not a lot because he's doing a shop and he does repairs, official licensed repairs for Pico products. So I'm just somebody that, because he's friendly, we've become friendly, um, he does this for me. So, and I'm trying to scale back asking him. But I contacted him a few months ago and said, are you up to a challenge? And 
we bantered back and forth a bit, and he said, all right, send it to me and I'll see what I can do. And his solution was that, yes, you cannot convert the locomotive to take in an AC ski. As simple as my brain thinks that should be, uh, it can't be done. You have to completely retool the bogey. And the way the motor sits in, even for the wiring. So, too long a story, made slightly less long. He came up with a solution, which is he put the pickups and some other issues into a passenger wagon behind it so these two are they're not permanently attached but if I want to run the locomotive I have to use that passenger wagon anyhow um, he left the decoder the Acme decoder in it and uh, I will show you this whole thing but we did get it working but I am redoing this intro because there is a problem that came up which you will see in the video and I'll talk about that problem but it has nothing to do with Andrew's work it has nothing to do with Acme it is a situation that is now solved so it's not an issue anymore but you will see it come up when it does its first uh, test run up the incline and then I will show it my repairs not repairs my adjustments that I had to do to solve this problem because at me because they weren't making a three rail version this was something and I learned something and so part of this video is called lesson learned so let's look at this amazing locomotive out of the box and then we'll talk about the problem at the end okay so here it is on the track to get a nice close-up of this again I did an unboxing and some pictures of it several months ago but uh, for some of you this may be the first time you've really seen it up close uh, it came in at 410 grams it felt heavier I really thought this would break 500 easily it definitely feels heavier than a couple of my 450 gram uh, locos I have it is an all-metal frame and chassis so that's a nice start to it so let's get up close and look at the details uh, a little bit on the front it's kind of hard to make out the running numbers there but uh, you go along the side this is the non window side I probably should turn around and let you see the other side as well there are windows on the other side uh, the grills are cut through so you can actually look through the grills and see some interior and then you get to the top and a lot of nice detail on the pantographs the pantographs are a mix of plastic and metal there you can get a better look at the uh, running number 3710019 but just nicely detailed nice little touches of color all along a very nice locomotive uh, I was very pleased when I opened the box which was months ago and really looked at it and showed it off but I did not do a let's look at it video because I need to get it converted and you can see it is connected to a car the the shoe is on the front end of this passenger train and it has with it 24 functions so there's the lights standard F0 turning it on firing it up We'll do some horns while that's going through. The long distance lights. Thank you. 
Alright, so all kinds of sound. And quite impressive. I've never owned an Acme before. Uh, I've read very little about them on my uh, Merklin forums. Uh, probably a mixed bag of reviews on them. So let's run this around a bit and then we'll hook it up to an EC rake of cars and see how it goes. So we will come back when we're ready to fire it up. All right, so here comes up the incline for the first time. It's at about 60% speed, so let's see how it handles it. No noticeable slowdown, powering up just fine. <laughs> the ski does not like that little turnout there, interesting. So here we are trying it after the repairs, which I'll explain later. going coming around the bend and getting ready to go up the ramp now it's already been up the ramp twice so this is not the standard but I'll explain all that in the follow-up so here it starts up the ramp on that point clear and if you remember in the first trial it hit at that point except that's a new point and yes, you can see there is a slowdown heading up into So it's not thrilled with that incline But at a higher speed it might handle It is a beautiful locomotive. And I've put it up to about two thirds the speed it might normally run. It's run about half speed. So again, a bit of a slowdown at the highest point there, but that is a long and fairly heavy rake of cars. So if it stays like that, no worries. All right, so let's talk about what I had to do. Okay, 
So I've got this on one of my sideboards here and I'm gonna show you what the problem was. The problem was twofold when you saw it banging on those, uh, as it was going up the incline and it was banging on the points, the turnouts. And here's the situation. Here is a standard nub. And if you notice, they get a little wider, but they also get taller. Let me put this on the side. If you can see the nubs, how short they are in the middle. That's what the, the third rail shoe, pickup shoe, rides on. But if you look, they get taller going through the middle here. And then, of course, you get two sets of tall ones. And this is designed, I assume, to maintain really good contact on the shoe as it's going through the point. Here's the problem. This locomotive was not designed for running on Maryland three rail track. So as the locomotive was coming through, this plate was catching both this double section here in the middle. This yellow plate was catching those coming through. And then as it was uh, coming along, it was catching on the outside here these really tall ones on the outside. And so what I had to do, I had to do some cosmetic damage. I cut this plate a little wider to accommodate these coming through, and then I had to sand down the bottom of the plate quite a bit. And even then, that didn't work well on this. This is, th this is the actual turnout that was on the incline no towards the top where it really clicked hard because one of these nubs is still quite a bit higher and it was still catching on it. So I've replaced that turnout and I did some cosmetic damage. I'm hoping as it runs, I'm not going to get somebody looking at it and saying, oh my God, that looks terrible because I did not do a perfect cut job. I tried to do it even and widen it. Um, so it definitely is not prototypical anymore but it had to be done. And this is no blame on Acme. This is no blame on anybody except me who bought a DC train that needed converted because it would not have had any of these problems on the DC track it's designed for. Lesson learned. All right, so there you have my check Railways Class uh, 371 locomotive and the issue that came up. That is not a mark against Acme. They built this for a two rail system and this would run just fine on two rail track and it runs on the straights, three rails without adjustments, fine. It was going into those Merklin turnouts where that panel, and I don't even know what that front panel is called, is so wide and low to the rails, it was catching on those raised three-point nubs that you see in the turnouts. And as I think I mentioned uh, in the video, I did not know, after seven years of using Maryland Track, I had never paid attention that the third rail pickup nubs actually got higher going through the turnouts. And I understand just looking at it, the mechanics of why they do that. Unfortunately, because this locomotive was not designed to run on three rail track, they would have never considered that problem. And so it was only running it in. Now, to make matters worse, as I demonstrated, even when I figured out how to solve the problem and made those damage adjustments where I had to damage that front rail. I had to cut it wider so it would go over the double nubs heading into the turnout. And then it was still catching those raised nubs uh, on the side. I had to adjust that. So if you get in and look close at it, you're going to go, oh, that's all damage. You've cut that. Well, if I ever sold it, I would sell it for a lot less than I paid for it because of the damage I had to do to it. But that is nothing on Acme. The only negative on this, the only negative on this is that it does not 
have a lot of pulling power with an eight car rake going up that incline by well with the passenger it slows down a little with the with the full rake of cars it slows down a bit more and again Yes, you want if you're going to have something that's pulling a rake of cars, you've got to have a strong enough motor in it that it can get up an incline because very few people are going to have pure flat layouts. If you have a flat table, this thing's perfect. But if you have a bit of an incline like I do, which is supposedly 2%, but apparently it's more like 2.5%, um, it, it, it struggles. You, you saw it on video, it struggles. But otherwise, it's a gorgeous locomotive, and any issues were from me and my impertinence at buying a two-rail locomotive and expecting it to work perfectly on third-rail track. Because you don't even think, oh wait, they might have this low plate that would catch on these raised nubs, and I never paid attention that they had raised nubs. If I noticed it in the past, it went out of my mind. Because when I got down and looked at where it was catching, it was clear it was on the plate catching those and noticing those raised nubs going through the middle of the turnout and on the branch off. So, as I'm titling this video, Lesson Learned. I don't recommend buying it or not buying it. If you have DC and a flat layout, then you're going to absolutely love this thing. If you have three rail, don't buy it to convert it. It's not worth the hassle. Just keep hoping or maybe buy the Roco one because I am sure the Roco one will be easily convertible. I'm surprised Roco's not making a AC version of it considering that Czech locomotives uh, and people that run model rails in Czech Republic, it's probably 40-50% of them are Maryland 3 Rail. Uh, Maryland 3 Rail is the dominant Central European uh, style of uh, track layout for HO modelers. So why companies are making it and not making it in a three rail version, I don't know. Maybe someday down the road, if somebody like Merklin, Pico, or Roco re-release a three rail version, would I buy it? Well, I've invested a lot of money in this one now. Uh, I don't know, but that's for down the road if and when it happens. So until another loco comes along that I get to uh, review, as always, I will say, I'll be the Zane Choose and happy trains. Take care, everybody. Mm -hmm.